Hi, and welcome back to the show. I hope that by now you've subscribed to this channel and are enjoying yourself. We today meet Sunil Benimadu, the chief executive of the Stock Exchange of Mauritius, for him to give us a macroeconomic perspective on how things are unfolding right now, both on the local and foreign markets. But he also gives us his thoughts on how we should be responding to this whole crisis from an economic perspective. So, Sunil, thank you very much for being here today. It's uh, pleasure. It, it's been 28 years, I think, that you've been in the investment world. And more specifically, Absolutely. you've been the chief executive of the Stock Exchange of Mauritius for the past 22 years. Surely you've seen a lot of uncertain times. You've seen a lot of market crashes. What do you think makes this one different? I think, uh, as you rightly pointed out, I've seen quite a lot of market turbulence during my 22 years as CEO of, of the exchange, starting with the Asian crisis in 1997, and then uh, the uh, Great Recession in 2008, and just now the COVID-19 crisis. What I think is very different is the scale, the scale, the depth, and the breadth of the crisis. I think uh, if you look at 2008, it was essentially a financial crisis touching uh, the, the Western world and the banking system in the US and in Europe, essentially. The rest of the world was, you know, doing pretty well, even on the financial services sector side. This crisis, I think, has hit the whole world. It's the first time that uh, we're seeing half of the world, around 4 billion people, in, the, in this general lockdown. And uh, what has started as a supply shock crisis is quickly turning into a potential demand crisis. And if it's not dealt with uh, in a prompt manner, I think this could lead to also a financial crisis. So if you look at previous crises in the world, they've all had one origin. Either it was a demand shock crisis a supply shock crisis or a financial crisis. This one, we're having all of these, potentially all of them in, uh, you know, in one go. Right. This is certainly much more impactful as, as a crisis and, and we don't know how long this will go on. How do you see people reacting this time? What is interesting is when, when the crisis started, I think uh, financial markets across the world discard the danger that uh, was, was unfolding in front of our eyes. Because while China was dealing with the crisis, the US markets were, you know, hitting all time highs. So it's only after when Europe uh, got hit that, you know, financial markets re realized that this was very, very serious. And since then, we've seen a lot of volatility you just have to look at the VIX index, which measures the fear. The VIX index went above 40, uh, which shows that there's a lot of fear right now. Of course, uh, we've seen markets recover from their lows, but we're still in a very volatile environment. As we speak, the S&P 500 is uh, on a year-to-date basis minus 13% after having even hit more than minus 20. The stock exchange of Mauritius, the SEMDEX, as, as we speak, has lost on a year-to-date basis 28%. And if you look at markets around the world, I think it shows that there's a lot of fear. And I think this kind of uncertainty until a vaccine or some sort of remedy is found I think we will be uh, in for a quite a rough fright. Right, but we also saw on one day one of the biggest ever rallies on the stock markets around the world, including Mauritius. What would explain yes. when people are scared, when people are uncertain, that they suddenly start buying and pushing prices? Well, I, I think there are two reasons. It's first, uh, when, once the fear factor uh, comes in, I think you see a lot of irrational behavior. People start panicking and they start selling. And then over a period of time, it's a normal human behavior. Uh, markets tend to look for the positive. And whenever there is a slight positive news, you know, it's, it's received in a very cheery kind of manner. And that's what explains, you know, uh, from time to time, you've seen any sign of hope, 
tends to lead to overreaction. Now, one of the key participants yes. on the market are obviously the companies that are listed themselves. And they yes. have got uh, certainly some issues right now. In terms of your Absolutely. role as a stock exchange, how do you see the exchange role right now in helping these companies recover? And also on the side, what do you think of all what is being spoken about in terms of quantitative easing, in terms of helicopter money, and everything that's talking about right now? Do you think the stock exchange has got a role to play here? Well, definitely. First of all, let me tell you, re with regard to listed companies, uh, we've had to give them more time. Uh, you know, especially those whose end of year results were supposed to be published. Other than that, I think from a more uh, fundamental uh, perspective, I think what we see post-COVID is companies would need funding, would need money, and I think we stand there as an exchange to provide them a proper platform to raise money. Of course, you would certainly understand that uh, raising capital on the stock exchange in, in periods of uncertainty is somehow clouded by the fact that there is no visibility about you know, what is the strength of these companies, how quickly can they turn around uh, this difficult situation into uh, one where they, they can become sustainable. Uh, but as a platform, we are ready to provide them with uh, the support that they need, uh, help them raise money either in the form of fresh equity capital or in the form of bonds. Uh, coming to your question about funding uh, at the macro level, the extent of the damage, I think, as we speak, is not known. We all know that it's going to be very, very serious, but I think as we speak, it's difficult to point out or put our finger on the size of the funding that will be needed. But we all know that it's going to be passive. So what are the tools that need to be used? I personally think that initially we should tap into our traditional financing conventional tools. We are in a very low interest rate environment. So government is in a good position to raise capital very long term at very low rates. I think if you raise capital very long term, what you should worry about is what is the cost of servicing. Hoping that by the time that you are expected to reimburse that money, you would have turned around the economy. I also believe that uh, we should have a, a look at facilities, parts like IMF and others have offered at very competitive rates. But of course, if all this is not enough, then of course, we need to look at the other types of funding. So that's when I think helicopter money would be one that we should look at, but only after having used all all the means that are at our disposal. With regard to quantitative easing, I think we've seen when we look at the experience of the European countries and the US, they've not necessarily had the impact that uh, they were expected to. Uh, they've essentially gone into financial markets. They've uh, essentially helped the, the rich in those countries, not necessarily the people that uh, they were targeted to uh, at the very beginning. Great. And so the last question is, how do you see the future? Well, I'm a born optimistic, uh, Roshan. So uh, I think this is definitely one of the worst crises that probably uh, our generation uh, will ever have to face. Uh, but I think uh, the world population has shown many times in the past that we are very resilient. I think Mauritius as a country has demonstrated uh, over the years that uh, we can be resilient. Uh, the damage is going to be far more extensive this time, but I'm hopeful uh, that we'll manage to sort out the problems. Uh, of course, it will take time. Uh, it will take a lot of commitment from all stakeholders not only from the government. I think as companies, as citizens, we need to bring our, our contribution to the solution. And if we all do what, what, uh, what is required, I think uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely come out of this. But this is a world problem. It's not only a problem for Mauritius. So even if Mauritius manages 
to deal with COVID internally because we are dependent on the rest of the world. How quickly we rebound will depend on how quickly the rest of the world opens up to us. So there are lots of question marks, uh, but I'm hopeful that we'll come out of this. And, and when we come out, probably we'll come out stronger because we would have learned quite a lot of things of how to deal with very unusual and very uncertain times. Thank you very much, Sunil, for bringing especially a technical twist to these you know, leadership series. And take care and keep safe. Now it's a pleasure, Roshan, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. I hope that you really enjoyed the insights of Sunil Benimadu. Stay safe and don't forget to click on the subscribe button. See you soon for other interviews.